Welcome, welcome to Yishun Methodist Mission. We are so glad that this morning we can be gathered in God's house to worship Him. This morning is special because not only we are celebrating the Holy Communion, later on afterwards we have our family day. Come, as we gather like this, shall we all rise to our feet for the call to worship? God invites us to worship Him this morning. Would you respond to the words in red? Praise is due you, O God, you who answers prayer. You are the hope of all things, Holy One, from the ends of the earth to the further seas. Rejoice in God, O people, and be glad. Indeed, let us remain standing. Let us shout and worship to the Lord with joy in songs. Over to the worship team. Amen. God is good. The Bible says only one is good. And only God is good. Amen. Jesus, you are so good. My heart. Let's sing that again. Jesus, you are so good. Jesus, you are so good. There's nothing to fear, cause I'm here in your presence. Jesus, you are so good. Jesus, you are so, so good. I just want to thank you with every beat of my heart. Given me eternal life And your words will light my way You've given me your spirit And your words is every day Jesus, you are so good Jesus, you are so good There's nothing to fear Cause I'm here in your presence Jesus, you are so good you are so, so good I just want to thank you With every bit of my heart You've given me a confidence And my soul is filled with peace For you are my provider You supply my every need Jesus, you are so good Jesus, you are so Cause I'm here in your presence Jesus, you are so good Jesus, you are so, so good I just want to thank you with every bit of my heart You've given me a confidence And my soul is filled with peace For you are my provider by my every need Jesus, you are so good Jesus, you are so good There's nothing to fear Cause I'm here in your presence Jesus, you are so good Jesus, you are so, so good I just want to thank you With every bit of my heart you are so good, Jesus, you are so good. There's nothing to fear, cause I'm here in your presence. Jesus, you are so good, Jesus, you are so, so good. I just want to thank you with every bit of my heart. And Jesus, you are so good. Jesus, you are so good There's nothing to fear Cause I'm here in your presence Jesus, you are so good 
Jesus, you are so, so good. I just want to thank you with every beat of my heart. I just want to thank you with every beat of my heart. I just want to thank you with every bit of my heart. Lord, indeed, we want to thank you. We want to thank you, God, for your goodness. Indeed, we thank you. It is because of what you have done on the cross. The atonement for our sins. The shame that you have taken from us. And God, we thank you. We praise you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the cross, Lord. Thank you for the price you paid, bearing all my sin and shame. In love you came and gave amazing grace. Thank you for this love, Lord. Thank you for the nail pierced hands. Wash me in your cleansing flow. Now all I know, your forgiveness and embrace. Worthy is the Lamb, seated on the throne, crown you now with men.
high and lift it up. Oh Jesus, Son of God, Son of God, the darling of heaven, crucified. Worthy. Father, we come into your presence. We give you thanks for the work that you have done through our Lord Jesus Christ. That the victory over death and sin has been won once and for all. And so we come in praise, in acknowledgement that no one can compare to you, O God. That by your wonderful grace, you have reached out to each one of us. That in your glorious light, you continue to shine the word of life into our hearts. 
Lord, we thank you once again for this gift of salvation that we have through Jesus Christ. That today, as your redeemed people, that we can worship you like this in spirit and in truth. We are eternally grateful for who you have been to us. We thank you for the peace that we experience in this land, for the well-being that we have. Lord, we give you thanks. Lord, we also are eternally grateful for this community that we have in YMAM. That as we grow as your church, we pray that you may use us as your community of faith to impact the generation in Yishun and beyond. That your name may be lifted high among all peoples. That your gospel may be proclaimed by our words, our actions, and all of our lives. Oh God, we desire more, more and more people to confess you as their saviour. So would you help us in our daily lives to be sensitive to your Spirit's prompting, that we may witness for you wherever you have placed us. Oh God, we are eternally grateful for the gift of family too. We pray that in our homes, that Lord, you will make us to be a blessing to our parents, to our siblings. Would you grant us unconditional love so that in our care, that they may experience the love of Jesus. Heavenly Father, we are also eternally grateful for the family of God they've given us, regardless of our land, our denomination. Lord, we want to pray for the churches all around the world today, that as at each church, as we celebrate the communion, remembering that we are one in Jesus Christ. Lord, we pray for the churches in Singapore and beyond, that Lord, would you multiply us? Lord, would you fill us with your Spirit so that we may go forth to proclaim your Word to the ends of the earth? Lord, we pray for the missionary that has been sent out by various churches. Lord, would you use them as your vessel, Lord, to lift out the Gospel to the people group that you have called them to? Lord, would you strengthen them today as they partake of the communion like us? remembering that Jesus has died for everyone who will come to His presence. So Lord, as we come into Your presence this morning, as the Bible is read, as, as Your Word is proclaimed, Lord, we pray that by Your Spirit that You may open our minds to Your Word of life, that we once again will be filled with Your wisdom so that we may continually walk in Your light for the rest of our life. Through Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. So, from the day we heard, we have not ceased to pray for you, asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of His will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding, so as to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to Him, bearing fruit in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God, being strengthened with all power according to His glorious might for all endurance and patience with joy, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. He has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of His beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Good morning, church. I need to greet you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. May the grace of our Lord Jesus be with you. Well, it has been quite a while that I have not preached in the English service, right? <laughs> so I think I can you know, uh, say something like Apostle Paul. You know, Though I'm not with you all always, but you are constantly in my prayer. <laughs> well, most Christians you know, are quick to acknowledge you know, the importance of prayer. 
I think more specifically, you know, uh, most agree that we should pray faithfully for one another and for the church as a whole. Correct? Wow, no knocking of heads. Uh. No knocking of heads. Uh. Okay. <laughs> Okay, most of us agree with that. Okay, but I think I want to ask a further question. Do you really constantly do that? Uh, no more knockings of head. <laughs> it's shaking of head already. <laughs> it's so important, you know, to remember each other in prayer. So today I would like us you know, to put on a very reflective head, you know, to learn something from the prayer of Apostle Paul. No, one important uh, question that we should actually follow up is when we pray you know, for one another, you know, what is the primary focus of our prayer? Do we pray for only materialistic things? Or do we only pray for, you no, know, God, remove my problems, uh, I have this health issue, please remove my pain, you know, and things like that? But do we pray for more? Do we pray for the spiritual well being, the spiritual aspect? Of the other party? How is your prayer life? Now, I think as we come uh, to Colossians 1, especially today's passage, a very familiar passage to every one of us, I think we want to take the opportunity to learn from Paul and the way he prayed for the Colossians and you know, what he's asking God to do in and through them. You know, as we read the content of Paul's prayer, it should encourage us to consider the kind of prayer we pray and evaluate the content of our own prayer for the church and even for one another. Now, before we consider the content of Paul's prayer, it's important to recognize the very first thing is his commitment to prayer. Paul says that he had never ceased you know, praying for the Colossians after he hear the, you know, the good story you know, about them. You know, here, Paul doesn't mean that you know, he, you know, he prayed without, uh, without seeding. He doesn't mean that he prayed 24 hours, you know, every second, every moment. No, this is not what he's referring to. But I think, I hope that through this illustration, uh, we will be able you know, to get a better picture you know, what does he, what does he really mean when he says he prayed unceasingly. You know, uh, when you listen to this uh, so-called illustration, you no, know, maybe you ask yourself this question: How faithful and ongoing are you, you no, know, in your prayer life? You no, know, in shopping mall, you no, know, we often see uh, children, you no, know, are whining or you no know, crying, you no, know, uh, especially if you go to toy service, huh, then you get to see oh, children want to get a toy, the parents don't want, and then they start to whine. Then the parents say, oh, okay, okay, let's go. I just now I tell you already, we just come here and look, look, see, see only. And then now you want to get a toy. No, 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 we are going back. But you realize that the kids, right, well, goes louder and louder. And then usually parents will do two things. One is, quickly look into the handbag and see whether it got sweet or not. And then put the sweet into the mouth of the children. Why when you have sweet in the mouth, the children cannot cry already? Ah, that's <laughs> then the other way the parents will do is oh, to look for this particular thing. Got Wi-Fi or not? Okay, then I'll, I'll give a tablet, I'll give a, a handphone I'll to keep the kid still and quiet. The smarter parents right, will preload, download you know, some of the cartoon clip before they go shopping. But the not very smart one, they try to look for free Wi-Fi, free connection. I think we are accustomed to constantly looking for free connection everywhere we go now today. Not just parents, I think for most of us we are like that. You know. But are we constantly looking for connection with God everywhere you go? It's a very intentional thing, you know, as in like, oh no, I shot of something. Am I connecting to God? No, that is that kind of um, commitment to prayer Paul said everywhere he go he made sure that he's in this particular connection with God he's praying unceasingly and this is something that we need to develop in our life you not know, to be constantly connected to God in our prayer life and not just come to him when we have trouble no even when we are in joy we should come to him as well no, share our joy with Him, share our daily activity with Him, share every moment we have with Him. 
It is such a blessing and such a privilege. So as we move on, now to verse 9, the first part of Paul's prayer you know, for Colossians is a prayer for knowledge. Now he prayed that God will fill the Colossians with the knowledge of his will, of God's will. Now here, the God's will doesn't mean that, you no know, God, who am I going to marry? Uh? Who is going to be my boyfriend? You no, know, what kind of job should I change? Not that kind of uncertain future, okay? The God's will here referring to the general desire and expectation that God has for all his people as revealed in his word. Okay? That is God's will. Okay, the general desire and expectation that God has for all his people as revealed in his word. Now, he wants the Colossians to understand what God has called them to and what God expects them to do. And I think the same thing he desires and expects every Christian as well. So for us, we, would, we should so-called seek God's will. And we must seek to obey in Him in every, way, in every way and to grow in maturity. And in our Methodist term, we call it sanctification. That means you know, to be holier and holier as we grow towards maturity, as we reflect the image of God. And Paul don't just simply pray for the Colossians to know the will of God. He also wants them to be able to apply the will of God in their life. And this is the function of spiritual wisdom and understanding. So, brother and sister, is there any area in your walk with God that are inconsistent, that, that are out of alignment already? And I think today God is calling us to align Him. Is there any of your words, of, of your action, are incompatible uh, yeah, to, to, the, to God's will? Maybe the way you live, the way you talk. While well, we know that Paul's Paul first request in his prayer is for knowledge, but it doesn't mean that he desired knowledge for the sake of knowledge. Today, you see very um, many Christians, they are very atas. No? They know all the knowledge. No? They can quote this commentary, quote this scholar, quote that scholar. No? But when you look at their life, you say, Alama. No, because they are not living, not applying the will of God in their life. And Paul pray for knowledge. Paul's goal is to hope to see that no collusion can work in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to Him. And this goal, in order to attain it, there are actually four characteristics that we can um, you know, take note of. The first one you know, is to bear fruits in every good work. I think about two years, coming to two years. Actually, two years ago, Raymond uh, introduced this family of uh, five siblings you know, uh, to me. So I got the opportunity to get to build relationship with them. And you know, I was praying, you know, God, give me the opportunity to be able to reflect you know, your image, you know, hopefully to bring them to Christ and things like that. After quite a so quite a long period of time, you no. Know, my role is just like a delivery man, going to deliver uh, Saint Song voucher to the family. You no, know. uh, every few months I will go and have a very short interaction with this uh, group of siblings, and then you no, know, uh, the initial conversation is always hi, bye, how are you? All? Getting good, ah? Okay, ah, no problem, ah, can ah? Okay, okay, bye, bye. That's it. Then slowly, you know, uh, they start to know me, they start to trust me more. And recently, the family you know, have some issue, you know, uh, something that they look forward for, but at the end, you know, it becomes a false hope. So now they are very disappointed and things like that. But I thank God for open doors. Last year, one of them managed to join the youth camp. And you know, uh, this year, you know, she's not able to make it. But the thing is that the younger siblings are going to join us in our Children's Day uh, celebration next Saturday. So it's like, you know, these are fruits you know, that God will give us when we persevere and when we you know, don't give out and we trust that God will do something. Yeah, and I also hope that you know, church can come alongside 
you know, brother and sister, come alongside these people, these people who have yet to know Christ, you know, and give them the opportunity to experience and encounter the love of God. And I think it's important. You know, bearing good fruits you know, in the Bible was actually talking very much about Galatians 5, you know, on fruits of the Spirit, the kind of characteristic that we should have. We are not saved by our good work. Okay? Please be, remember, we are not saved by our good work, but we are saved for good work. Okay? God saved us to do good work, but we are not saved by our good work. So don't mix up the sequence. So as we reflect upon our life, during the course of your life as a Christian, have you seen such growth in you? The fruit of the Spirit, have you seen fruits in your life you know, that is drawing people to Christ? And the other characteristic is increasing in the knowledge of God. No, growing in the knowledge of God is the only way we are, you know, we are to be you know, in order to be one that is fully pleasing to God. And this knowledge of God, there's a background, there's a context. It was actually drawn from uh, Hosea chapter 4. And in the whole book of Hosea, was actually talking about the covenantal relationship between God and his people. And when Paul refers to increasing the knowledge of God, he's also to remind the Colossians that you know, they should also, when they, when they grow, when they know God more, you know, they should also resonate you know, with the overtone of covenant relationship and the loyalty that God expects from his people. And in this sense, are you growing in your knowledge of God? Do you recognize you have this covenantal relationship with Him? And do you accept or do you embrace this expectation of God that He wants you to be loyal to Him? And before I come to the third point, I think we... I don't, know, I don't know about you, but I'm very excited and I'm very proud of something that I want to share. I shared this morning. Oh, some of you know already, right? Yeah. Yesterday, I wait, you know, 9.15, turn on my channel 5, and then I start waiting, you know, because uh, the, the race is 9.30. Ma. So keep waiting, waiting. Hey, how come don't have? Huh? And then the news keep reporting and, and things like that. So wait, wait, I watch live. It was so exciting. There's always a difference when you come on site and online. You know, the, the atmosphere is different. So the same thing. So this race you know, was so exciting because we are expecting a medal. You know, whether it's gold, silver or bronze, doesn't matter. A medal, that's what we want. You know, for an athlete to be able to reach a world-class level, one needs to, to be able to endure years of training, you know, years of hardship. No, if you are, in fame, you are not famous, huh? no, you lose never mind, nobody knows. You are peanut only. Ma. But when you are famous and you couldn't get it, what will happen? Why well, you get to bear all the nasty comments from the public, right? You know, and you, they need to endure, they need to bear the kind of pressure, the expectation from the country, from their fellow citizens. And it's not easy. I mean, being an, an, an sport woman myself, you know, I know how hard it is. And do you know that this is her third Asia game? ASEAN game, this is her third ASEAN game. And every game is four years. So imagine, uh, she had already, you know, taken part in this competition since she was like maybe 17, 18 years old. And for 13 years, not 12, because if you look at the lanyard of the medal, right, it's 2022. 20, that means this ASEAN game right, was delayed for a year. So it's not 12 years, but 13 years. 13 years of waiting, 13 years of endurance you know, in this particular sport. Do you know that athletes have lifespan? And the prime time of an athlete right, is 21 years old to 27. And obviously, she's already at the tail end already. So when an athlete reaches about 25, you can actually sense that, uh, how to say, your stamina, your energy will start going down slow. And Shanti actually feels the same. In one of her interviews, she said when she was about 25, 26, 
no, her, her result was actually not outstanding. No, and she had to bear many nasty comments and things like that. I have retired early, la, don't shame yourself, la, don't say so. No, a lot of this kind of comment that is going to her. But what happened? People who love her, her family member, her coach, trust in her. And they fin finally found the method that boosts her energy again. Find the right, right method to keep her, you know, to, to have a quick start out you know, and then you know, to go on with great momentum. It, it was amazing. You know, at 27, she managed to find the so-called key and she had so many breakthroughs. And she broke six personal records in a year. That is incredible for an athlete. So I'm very excited. I'm not in track and, track and field uh, uh, area, but the thing is that it was just so exciting to watch that match yesterday because it is the first athlete medal since 1974. I was telling the Chinese congregation this morning, I haven't even born yet. And so can you imagine how long it has been you know, that Singapore wait for it? But who supported her? She was not alone. She didn't like, wow, well, no, go and meditate. And then after that, she got this power from heaven. And then, wow, well, then she stand out. No, she had a group of people. She had somebody, she had a companion that is with her. And the same thing for our walk with Christ. We cannot be alone. We need each other and all the more the third characteristic, we need God. We need God to strengthen us with all His power. Athlete lifespan is maybe that few years. But walk with God uh, is one, you know, is your whole lifetime. You need much endurance, you need much uh, patience to do that, to be faithful in Him. You know, even amidst difficult situation or circumstances. No, you need that patience from God in order to deal with people who may be irritating or difficult you know, to spend time with. And with this characteristic, let us reflect for a moment, have you been faithful to God in the midst of you no know, difficulty or you know, in, in times when you are having you know, struggles? and things like that. Many PSLE parents will tell me, Pastor, today I don't come to church already. Why? Ah? Oh, and my children need to study more. No, we have the tendency to uh, take the problem into our own hand and we forget to come to God. And when we don't come to God and we try to resolve the problem with our own means, and if we could not do it, and what will happen? We will start to complain, right? God, why me? Why this happened to me? Why you are not so gracious? No, you are so gracious to Timothy. You are not gracious to me. So we start to compare. And that's why Paul reminded the Colossians you know, of the last characteristic, and that is to be tempu. You know, giving thanks to the Father. I know some of you are having uh, filling up the the. Uh, so called worship, but I didn't I don't have the point over here. Okay, giving thanks to the Father who qualifies you. The fourth characteristic of a person who walk worthy will be a person of gratitude for God's work of salvation. And Paul described the three significant aspects of our salvation our inheritance, our transference, and our redemption in verses twelve to fourteen. No, we, are, we are not worthy, we are not deserved of this eternal hope. But Christ gave it to us. No, we are once in the darkness, but now we are given new identity. We are the children of God. We live in the light. And we are redeemed from our sins so that we can have a new start. Gratitude before God is forever fitting because all that God has done for His people in Christ is just so worthy. You know, having a heart of gratitude also protects us from complaining and grumbling, which is actually a symptom of dissatisfied with God. You know, God, you don't give me enough. That's why I complain. 
or you give me not good enough, I also complain. Also, you admire this person, admire that person. Sometimes, it's a way you know, that we are telling God, God, not enough. I'm not satisfied. So be careful. You know, be thankful you know, for what you have. When you start to give thanks to God, it is actually helping and training your inner man to be more and more sensitive to the graces of God in your life. And brother and sister, where are you in your life of thankfulness? If you realize that you are not as thankful, you are more like a complaining king or a complaining queen, eh? then I think you need to take some steps to cultivate that kind of gratefulness in you. Be grateful and be thankful to God. Because when you know you have so much, then you will start to realize that there are many others who also need Christ's grace and you will start to care for them. And today as we come before the Lord's table, now let us stand a moment to reflect on our work with God. How have your prayer life been? Have you been praying for other people to be filled with the knowledge of God's will? Have you been bearing fruits, increasing the knowledge of God, being strengthened by Him, or being grateful by Him? You know, Mother Teresa once said, she said, gratefulness to God is to accept everything, even my problem, with joy. Now today, our faith, we have this kind of consumerism mentality. We only want the good and blessing from God, but we don't want all the difficulties, we don't want all the challenges. But many times, it is in all these difficulties and challenges that God help us to learn that His grace is sufficient. So may God have mercy on us and may we all you know, rise out to be a people of prayer, you know, willing to pray for other people, allowing God to use our life to be a blessing. Let us pray. Father, we want to thank you for this reminder. Lord, as bread, the bread that will be broken later, God, let us be reminded of your sacrificial love. Help us, Lord, like Paul, to be constantly connected to you in prayer so that we are sensitive Lord, to the guidance of the Holy Spirit who works work within us. Lord, help us to live a life that is worthy of you. Lord, this, this passage is so familiar to many of us. Some of us could, could even memorize the verses in this passage. But God, we don't want just to attain knowledge for the sake of having it. We want to apply it in our lives so that we can walk in a manner worthy of you. So Lord, if there is any, in any areas you know, that we fall short, Forgive us and help us to grow. Help us not to forget your faithfulness and your love. Help us to be a group of people who are thankful and who are so willing for you to use our life in response you know, to your faithfulness and your love. So as we come before you, come before your table, please do remind us again. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's rise to our feet. Sing the next song as a response. Hearts are hungry tonight. Many trapped in darkness yearn for the light. 
So many who are far from home and many who are lost. O oh Lord, your wounded children need the power of the cross. As bread that is broken, use our lives. As wine that is poured out, O oh willing sacrifice, empower us, Father. To share the love of Christ as bread that is broken, Lord, use our life. Help us to begin where we are. Help us to love the people near to our hearts and leave a favor of mission field wherever you may call lord your love will do each of us until you touch them all as bread that is broken use our lives as wine that is poured out, a willing sacrifice. Empower us, Father, to share the love of Christ. As bread that is broken, Lord, use our bread that is broken, use our lives. As wine there is poured out, a willing sacrifice. Empower us, Father, to share the love of Christ. This bread that is broken, Lord. As bread, as bread that is broken, Lord. One last time. As bread that is broken, Lord, use our life. Once again, a very warm welcome to Yishun Methodist Mission. We are so glad that today we can be worshipping together and later on we will fellowship together. But first of all, we want to welcome uh, some newcomers or newer comers amongst us. We want to give thanks for how God has brought you amongst us. We want to acknowledge uh, Mr. and Mrs. Ellen, uh, Brandon and Braden, right? Yeah, they are sitting in front of Desmond and Alicia. Uh, we want to welcome you. We also welcome uh, Cindy's sister, uh, Christine is amongst us today. We praise God that you can be with us. Uh, I, I will not make us stand up and welcome each other because I think later on during family day, we have time to do that, all right? So after the service, we will welcome each other. We will shake hands so you can get to know each other a bit more. Uh, but ho hold on your welcome for each other. Uh, hold it right there because let me, let me give you some uh, important highlights, important announcements. Uh, as a family of God, uh, we care for each other by knowing what's happening. First of all, we want to acknowledge the children amongst us. We are happy for you that this coming Friday is your school holiday. <laughs> you get a Children's Day holiday. Uh, many of us are envious. But we praise God indeed for children amongst us, children who remind us every day when we see them to have that childlike faith. That today, actually my own children also reminded me, actually we are all children, right? We are all children of God. Uh, but the people who are younger than us, young children, reminds us that we need to come before God with that childlike faith. So would you uh, bless the children later on uh, as you see them for family day? Would you encourage them? Would you help them to continue to grow in their faith and love for Jesus Christ. Next, next slide. Talking about Children's Day, here at YMAM, we, have, we are organizing next 
Friday, uh, next Saturday, sorry, next Saturday morning, a children's and family day event. We praise God for the 34 families that have signed up, consisting of over 100 people coming, 66 children and 50 parents or siblings of these children. We ask that as a family, would you pray? Would you pray that God will minister His grace and love through this event? particularly to the 12 new families who will be coming to church for the first time on Saturday morning next week. Would you partner us to be praying? Some of us are serving. We pray also for them that God will use them to be His light and salt here in Wine Man. Alright, so that's Children's Day. The next news I have for you, we talk about our church camp for next year. I hope that you have Pencil down in your calendar for next year, 19 to 22nd June, okay? We are announcing the dates early because in that week, I believe it's on the 17th of June, it's a public holiday. So don't plan travel overseas. Want to travel, travel to JB with us that week, okay? We will be having our church camp. So would you block out these dates from the 19th to the 22nd June? Some have already begun to ask, wow, okay, we are going to Holiday Inn at Johor Bahru uh, City Centre. Uh, what about the cost? What about this? Uh, we are telling you the dates and the venue so that you can block up your schedule. And our question for you, thinking about church camps, would you like to deepen your relationship with God and with the family of God? If that is your main objective, set aside these four days it's going to be a time where we will fellowship more closely than we normally do over cell meetings or on Sundays. Block out these dates, uh, 15th of October onwards. More details will be released to you, but we ask that from now to 15th of October, would you prayerfully consider using our church camp to be a place, to be a time where you deepen your relationship with God and with His people here in YMM. All right, so set aside these dates, more details come, coming up two weeks, two Sundays from now. All right, next, let's talk about today. A huh? little bit about today. So today is our family day, our annual family day. After the service, after the benediction is pronu uh, pr pronounced, we ask that you uh, stay behind. There will be, I will give you a short briefing about details, where to have lunch. But after the service is lunch and there'll be dessert, and afterwards, uh, we will come back to the sanctuary again for the last part of our family day for games. A time of fun, a time of laughter, a time of bonding together. All right? Uh, so uh, lunch will be served outside. You will get your bento box and you can eat either in Pingyu Chapel or Unit 17. There are enough tables and chairs for us in these three locations. All right. So I ask that uh, you be ready. Be ready to not just talk to the people that you normally talk to on Sunday or in your cell. Talk to people that you have not managed to catch up with. This is a good time to share and to encourage. All right. So this is what will happen after service today. Next slide. Uh, Two Sundays from now, uh, October is a very exciting month. We start off with Family Day. Two Sundays from now is our Gospel Sunday. At this pulpit, once again, the Gospel of Jesus Christ will be proclaimed. The question is, would you come normally? I hope not. I hope you have begun to consider one or two of the people in your life who also need to hear the Gospel. Invite them to join us on the 15th of October let us hear and respond to the gospel together. We have invited Dr. Chris Chong, uh, who is very in tune with the current world, very in tune with the pop culture, very in tune with the latest happening, and she will use the Bible uh, to remind us of the gospel of Jesus Christ on the theme of entering into fullness of life. So we ask that, would you not just send out an invite, but would you continue to pray, pray for the speaker and pray for the oikos that you are inviting. And to gear us up a little bit, I understand that <clears throat> our Witness and Evangelism Committee, from this Friday onwards, they will be sending out daily prayer so that you and I can partner together for the gospel as we watch how God will work 
amongst us. All right, so watch out, keep a lookout for that daily prayer that comes your way from this Friday onwards till next Friday. All right, speaking of uh, next Sunday, uh, speaking about praying, would you pray for our senior pastor? She will be preaching at our mother church, Hinghua Methodist Church, next Sunday, uh, bringing God's word uh, to God's people in another location. Next, speaking of next Sunday, next slide, please. Next Sunday is a Trinity Theological College Sunday. Uh, there is a second offering to collect uh, for that Sunday for the work of God's church in TTC. All right? And next Sunday, our sermon series continue in Colossians. We will move on to the last part of chapter 1. All right, shall we rise to our feet? Let us respond to God with the same fourth song. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases His mercies never come to an end They are new every morning, new every morning Great is thy faithfulness, O Lord Great is thy faithfulness The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases his mercies never come to an end They are new every morning, new every morning Great is thy faithfulness, O Lord Great is thy faithfulness They are new, they are new every morning, new every morning Great is thy faithfulness, O Lord Great is thy faithfulness. They are new, they are new every morning, new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness, O Lord. Great is thy faithfulness, O Lord. Great is thy faithfulness. So before we receive the benediction, let us also pray for the food that we are going to makan later. <laughs> so let us pray. Lord, we want to thank you for this day, a day that we have been looking forward because we want to have fellowship with one another. So we want to thank you for this food that has been prepared. Bless the hand who prepared all these delicious food and del desserts. And Lord, use it you know, to our use and to us, you know, your service and made us ever mindful of the needs of others. And so, Lord, as we dismiss from here, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forevermore. Amen. Please be seated. Mm -hmm.